Greetings all. Since I happen to have one here, I thought I'd give you a rundown on a modern 120mm round. What I have here is an inert, see it says inert, meaning not ert, uh, M865 training sabo round. You know it's a training sabo by the fact that it is blue, whilst war shots are going to be black. Uh, uh, training sabers are made out of a cheaper material and often you have a cone at the back instead of fins so that they don't fly as far if somebody messes up and fires a sabo around with heat index which would result in it going somewhere just shy of low earth orbit. All the projectiles are color coded so explosive for example would be green with yellow lettering. And I'm going to start with the bottom of the round. So this is the aft cap. It is the one piece which is left behind after a modern round is fired. And this takes up a lot less room than a traditional shell casing rattling around inside the tank once you fired it. The rod which comes up is the primer. And the reason it sticks up that much is that you want the correct amount of propellant to detonate at the same time because if you have it unbalanced then you don't get the same smooth up of uh, smooth buildup of gases and it is a little bit more risky if that happens you know you could blow it I don't understand the physics behind it but you do need to have you, you can't just have a little base primer like you would have let's say on a pistol round on the bottom right where the primer cap is and yes a modern tank does have a firing pin it's electrically fired, but it has a firing pin. It looks just like a, a firing pin you'd, you'd expect from a rifle, except it's about yay long. And what it does, instead of a percussion primer, such as you might find on a handgun, it acts as an electrode. And the primer is detonated by electrical current, which is why emergency firing devices on a modern tank, if the main electronics go down, or the electrics go down, they're often a hand crank, such as on the M1, the Master Blaster, you crank hard, it's really a dynamo and it sends electricity through the firing pin. Or, let's say in the Chieftain Mark, uh, the Chieftain 1 video, Chieftain 1? Challenger 1 video, uh, it's a little button, you press the button, and it closes a circuit which has its own little independent battery. Anyway, so electricity goes through the firing pin, sets off the primer, which sets off the propellant, which gives you the big boom. Now, for some reason, you don't want to store around with the primer cap directly on the metal floor of the tank. Can't imagine why not. The rest of the shell casing is made of a form of cellulose and it is burned up in the explosion. So the aft cap is sufficient to seal the breach instead of requiring the entire casing to expand as you would find on a traditional round. The catch is that this is simply not as robust as a metal shell case. So when you're loading the tank, uh, you may sometimes see uh, loaders have placed a cloth pad at the edge of the loader's hatch to ensure as they're pulling it down, they don't scrape the side on the way down. And the loader is supposed to inspect every round for integrity. So if there are scrapes in this water-resistant coating, or you see bulges perhaps where the water-resistant coating may have been overcome by moisture, and then you, the, the case expands as a result. Now, obviously, an expanded casing is going to prove problematic being inserted into the breech if you can. And, of course, the other problem is if you drop this cellulose casing, it could break apart completely, it will shatter, and you get propellant fallout and scatter. This is a bad thing. One other catch with the combustible casing is that pulling the round out of the tube instead of firing it is disincentivized. So you can end up with a separated case. So if the round is snug for some reason in the breach, such as let's say having residue from earlier fired rounds, if you manually drop the breach to extract the round, the extractors will pull the rim of the base. So the extractor basically just grabs hold of this edge and pulls it out again, like in your typical uh, rifle. Uh, but what will happen is it will pull the base but the shell casing is going to stay right where it is, in the tube. So if you don't notice this and you open the breech all the way, and the aft cap comes down, and the rest of the round stays in there, well, you're going to end up with propellant falling out and scattering. This is a bad thing. Thus, 
During a misfire drill, reseating the round normally just requires you pull the breech only part way down, let it slam up, and it avoids pulling the round out entirely. If you do need to rotate the rounds, part of the misfire drill, you got to do it carefully. Now, I have had a separated casing happen in my tank. Now, fortunately, the loader caught it. He kicked the aft cap back in, breech came back up, and we found a safe spot to fire off the round a few days later. The casing, of course, is also part of the reason as to why the practice of lap loading is now strongly discouraged. So that was when he had a round in the tube and the loader had already grabbed the next round and he was holding it ready for immediate reloading as soon as the loaded round was fired. And it's part of the reason why loading times for the British three-piece ammo isn't quite as slow as some people assume. The projectile is inert, and so you can hold it, you can lap load the projectile. So, moving on to the projectile. Kinetic energy penetrator is itself a dart. Ugh. And it's got, I mean, it literally is a dart. It's got fins at the back to keep the pointy end forwards. And it is kept centered as it goes down the tube by these sabot petals. French for uh, a type of shoe, sabot. Which, if you will recall your Star Trek correctly, is also the origin of the term sabotage. Modern sabots seem to have settled on three of these petals per projectile. Once the projectile has left the muzzle, the air is caught by the petals and they are peeled away. So it's to be a danger to everybody around them. And this is why sabot rounds such as APFSDS or MPAT should not be fired over the heads of friendly infantry. Uh, incidentally, there's a bit of a myth going around that sabot rounds are incompatible with muzzle brakes. Firefly, Comet and Bradley would like to have a word with you. Anyway, the dart goes that way, hits metal and basically punches through, taking little bits of metal inside with them called a spall. These little fragments of metal are extremely unhealthy to anyone or anything inside the vehicle which it hits. However, if the armor is too thin to produce spalling, you get what is known as overpenetration. So you make a dark sized hole on one side of the vehicle, a dark sized hole on the far side of the vehicle, dark sized holes on anything in between, and outside of brown pants for the crewman, quite possibly nothing else, especially if the anything in between isn't important. If so, you're firing at such a target, you're probably better off using a shaped charge round, such as heat. So this is a dummy heat projectile, and it is heavy. Now, do note that normally the probe is indeed perpendicular to the face of the projectile, but hitting dirt at high Mach numbers tends to bend metal. So the probe performs three functions. Firstly, it's part of the fusing mechanism. Nose hits the target, the projectile detonates. Secondly, it, it functions something as a windshield, so it creates a pressure cone which in effect clears the air as a windshield uh, for the decidedly non-aerodynamic flat bit, the main body of the round. It also performs something of a stabilizing function. And thirdly, it provides adequate standoff or room for the penetrating jet to form. So you've you got to have a little bit of space between the armor plate and the jet. So inside here is a metal cone surrounded by explosives. The explosives detonate, the cone collapses the liner, which basically turns into a plasma jet, which then punches through the armor. Now, it is quite nasty enough on its own without worrying about bringing any spalling in along with it. Anyway, those are the basic principles for the rounds, which I happen to have as visual aids. Hope you found it interesting and informative. I'll talk to you on the next one.